The Federal Reserve isn't done yet. Rate hikes are coming. They are not finished by a long shot. So Q3 GDP looks good. It is positive 2.6% and a lot of people we are cheering on the streets. We even have President Biden declaring victory, saying that this is evidence that our economic recovery is continuing to power forward. Yes, this GDP report has reset the recession clock. But we need to understand what this means for the economy in the months ahead. More importantly, the message and the green light the Federal Reserve is getting from this piece of news. Now let's remember, the number one enemy for the Fed is inflation. And the only tool they have to solve this problem is rate hikes, nothing else. They can't control supply but they can influence demand by making everyone poorer. And when we have a piece of good news, this tells the Fed one thing. You need to keep hiking. The economy is still growing. It is strong and people still have money left to spend. Even though we know the economy is already circling the toilet. Now, in fact, the markets are already pricing in a 81% chance of a 75-point hike and a 100% chance of a hike in general. This is going to add more stress to the economy, which is on the verge of cracking. So let's go through the GDP numbers and break down if this recovery, this economic growth is truly genuine or if it is just something temporary. Now, on the surface, the numbers look good. We had two negative quarters and then a beautiful spike up to 2.6%. For Q3, but the devil lies in the details. If we break down Q3's GDP, we see something very interesting here. The biggest boost in GDP comes from a narrowing trade deficit, and that contributed to a huge 2.7% growth in GDP. And if you weren't sure where that money came from, just remember that the US is exporting an insane amount of oil and gas to Europe. The price differential for gas between the US and Europe is just so high. We are talking about seven times difference. So energy exports are helping to massage the GDP numbers. But I want us to focus on the main driver of the US economy, which is domestic consumer spending. And this contributes to around 70% of the total GDP. So if consumer spending craters, that is a big problem, which is exactly what we are witnessing today. We can see back in early 2021, Consumer spending contributed to over 7% of GDP growth easily, but it's crashing year after year and it's just around 1% of growth in Q3. And not to mention, we have 0.4% from government spending. So I wouldn't call this genuine economic growth. Now the GDP might be positive, yes, but if you take away all these exceptions, it is well below 2.6%. And economies, they all know this strength is temporary. And according to one, Exports will soon fade and domestic demand is getting crushed under the weight of higher interest rates. We expect the economy to enter a mild recession in the first half of next year. Now, I agree with the domestic demand. It's going to get crushed further, but let's quickly address the part on US exports. Now, I expect energy exports to continue staying high, staying strong for a quarter or two more at the very least because the situation in Europe is dire and winter is coming. Because Russian gas is offline, the US now supplies 40% of Europe's gas and this demand from Europe is going to stay strong all the way into 2023. We can see how LNG from the US and abroad won't be enough to make up for Russia's shortfall. And that means Europe's demand will be strong for US LNG at least for the next 6 to 9 months. Plus, we have Morgan Stanley calling for higher LNG prices for the next 2 years because of Europe's demand. So we can expect US GDP to be supported by these gas sales to Europe. But in reality, US consumer demand is actually dying. But understand what the Fed is seeing today, right? Their dual mandate is all about ensuring maximum employment and stable prices. Now, obviously, prices are out of control. We know that. But employment data seems to be extremely strong. Number one, we have payrolls rising by over 260,000 and unemployment is down. And to power, this means a job market that is expanding and people are still spending. This is why inflation is high. And we can see that unemployment is at 3.5%, matching the 1969 levels. But we all know better, right? We know people are working two to three jobs to stay afloat. But to the Fed, the economy looks great. And number two, the Fed's strategy for global demand destruction is working. The Fed's rate hikes are working to create a domino effect across the world to hike interest rates as well or face a currency devaluation. We even have the ECB hiking rates from 0.75% to 1.5%. And 
And this is very significant because Europe is on the front lines of a recession with its energy crisis. They are going to get squeezed, but inflation is still a bigger problem. The ECB had no choice but to hike rates. And to the Fed, this means the world is getting the message. If we hike, you have to hike as well. So the Fed is not going to stop hiking until inflation is crushed. It's all going according to plan. And they have the green light. Yes, the Fed is very likely going to hike to 5%. And that could trigger a global recession. We have economists all predicting the Fed hitting 5% as early as March in 2023. We can see in blue estimates hitting 5% in March, staying high till June and then rate cuts coming in by December 2023 and staying at 3% till 2025. Now, cutting rates essentially means a Fed pivot, which is going to be unlikely until something breaks in the economy. The inflation giant in the room is still too big and all official signs are pointing towards a recovery and a robust economy. But big problems are happening, guys. They are building under the surface and we are going to enter an earnings recession very soon. In fact, it might already be here. We've talked about how technology companies and how they are the canary in the coal mine. And this time, they are showing us that consumer demand is circling around the toilet. I want us to focus on Google because this is perhaps the biggest online advertising space around. They earn their revenue through brands and companies advertising on their platforms. And we are seeing Google stock getting hammered down by 10% when earnings came out. Google missed earnings estimates by a crazy 15% and underperformed revenue estimates by over 2%, which is a big deal. And why is this happening? because companies are scaling back on their advertising money. They know consumer confidence is low. They know spending is going to crater, and this is going to be a very dark Christmas. We have Google's YouTube business taking a hit with advertising revenue dropping by 2% year over year to $7 billion. Now, this is not good news for the economy because as a whole, when companies cut away their advertising budgets, this is going to feed into an earnings recession and cause spending to crash even more. And now we also have Facebook facing an earnings crash, causing the stock to fall by 25%. And if we add up all these warning signs, we're gonna see real economic growth actually crash thanks to consumer spending cratering. And that's why we need to be very careful about all these GDP numbers going forward because the data is becoming very skewed. The true domestic economy is shrinking but it looks like everything is okay, right? Rainbows and sunshine everywhere. Now, the energy sector is definitely booming, selling oil and gas to Europe, but the economy as a whole is suffering. We have ExxonMobil posting record profits, tripling to $20 billion, but we are seeing big tech starting to crash horribly. So this recession is not going to be an even one. Now, right now, we are seeing very conflicting messages in the economy. We have a rise in US consumer spending and wage inflation is still going up. And as we said, this is all the Fed needs to know about hiking rates even further. They have not achieved demand destruction yet. Now, if the Fed decides to keep hiking rates, as I believe they will, this is going to break the system sooner or later. And let's quickly go through the severity of how bad this situation can get. Now, the first is an earnings recession. Companies are going to bring in less revenue and profit margins are going to get squeezed. Remember what higher interest rates mean. Consumers are going to start paying more for their other expenses including their mortgage payments. Mortgage rates have soared past 7% for the first time in 20 years, and this is going to take a huge chunk of cash away from people's budgets. And after you deduct food and fuel, there's truly nothing left to save or spend on discretionary. And that's why we can see the personal savings rates near the lows of 2008 recession, and this is not good news. It is an insane drop from over 26% to 3.1% in slightly under two years. And guess what? This is the good ending. A recession in reality, even as GDP numbers stay strong thanks to energy exports. But the real risk is the second scenario, which is the bond market breaking. We are seeing many dangerous things happening in US treasuries right now. The problem with rising rates is how they will continue to crush bond values. And this is making it a sure loose investment in the immediate future. We have JP Morgan worried about who's going to buy all of these US bonds. We can see a mixture of commercial banks, foreign countries, and the Fed all halting their bond purchases. And the only time when money will flow back into bonds is when investors believe a pivot is coming. And right now, bond liquidity is drying up in the market. We even have the US Treasury asking the big banks if they should buy US bonds. And this is a desperation move. 
because the world's biggest bond market is becoming illiquid. Even Janet Yellen is hinting at the potential treasury buybacks coming. So the US government is going to buy back the same bonds that they issued in the past. And this opens a whole can of worms. Yes, you get rid of the older and less liquid treasuries whose prices have crashed to hell. However, to finance this purchase, the treasury has to raise money by selling more bonds at higher interest rate, which is dangerous. Remember, the Federal Reserve can't buy bonds from the treasury at this moment. Printing money is not possible. Janet Yellen has to sell more bonds to the public, but who's buying? So for example, the treasury will buy back a bond that yielded 2% in the past at maybe a 20% discount. But to fund that purchase, they now have to sell new bonds at a yield of 4%. And this is going to add additional strain to the national debt. And if these new bonds at 4% aren't being sold, no one wants to buy them, this will just push up bond yields even further. So I want us to understand the truth behind the GDP numbers. It looks good on the surface, but it is a bloody graveyard underneath with consumer demand dying. But to the Federal Reserve, the metrics looks good. And they will continue to hike rates because inflation is still the number one crisis the United States is facing. Now, recession in 2023 is going to be inevitable. No matter how the Fed moves, they cannot save the economy. Now, if the Fed does nothing and allow rates to sit at 3 to 4% for an extended period of time, we are going to enter a stagflation hell. We will see inflation stay elevated and crush consumer spending and savings even further. And if they choose to do the unthinkable and pivot, we will see another surge in inflation. Yes, there will be a temporary euphoria rally, but reality will strike the market sooner or later and we will be back at square one. And that's why I believe the Fed will continue to hike rates until something breaks. I believe their hand will have to be forced by either the bond market collapsing or unemployment really spiking hard. And if that happens, power will do a bank of England and turn on the printing presses. And that's why I'm building a mix of cash and gold, especially as we head towards winter. I do not know when the markets will break. But if a collapse happens, I will have dry powder to jump on cheap equities. And my stockpile of gold is to hedge against the event. If Powell loses his mind, he goes crazy and then he pivots early. So don't take the GDP numbers at face value, guys. There are still big structural problems in the economy. But to the Fed, the economy is looking strong and rate hikes are still coming. So let me know what you think. Is the Fed actually considering a pivot soon? Or will they keep hiking until something breaks? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.